Here are three times when you should update the BIOS on your computer. Number one, if you've just built it, you should update the BIOS. Always update your BIOS after you finish building your PC before you even install your operating system. That way you make sure you have the newest one available and you won't run into any weird software issues. Number two, speaking of software issues, when you start to have software issues, that is a good time to update your BIOS. And older BIOS can sometimes cause software issues. So before you get too deep trying to diagnose software issues, make sure you have an up-to-date BIOS to mark that off as a possible issue. Number three, you should update your BIOS whenever major updates are released. Over the last year, especially, there's been numerous emergency BIOSes released, both for Intel and AMD. These have been released to mitigate potential issues, one of them being Intel CPUs literally burning themselves alive. So whenever you hear about major CPU issues, keep an eye out for emergency BIOS updates in case your CPU or other hardware is susceptible. So now that you know when to update your BIOS, let's talk about how to update your BIOS. Before you can download it and start working on it, you need to figure out what motherboard model you have so you can download the correct BIOS. The easiest way to do that is to open up your system information app within Windows and that'll tell you exactly what you have. So just click on the search bar and type in system information. Mine comes up after I type in system. And you can see here where it says baseboard manufacturer. I have Asus Tech Computer Inc. That's Asus. And then we have baseboard product, which is your model number. I have the ROG Crosshair X670E Extreme. Yes, I actually paid for the ROG Crosshair Extreme motherboard. Don't ask me why. Now that you know your motherboard manufacturer and model, it's time to go to the manufacturer's product page for your model. I'm gonna type in the model name directly. You can see it's already pre-filled here. I've got the Asus ROG Crosshair Extreme X670E. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the link you're clicking on is actually from the manufacturer. You can see this one here is from asus.com. That's the one I'm gonna select. Then you're gonna to wanna to click on the support tab. And then you're gonna click on the drivers and tools and make sure you have the BIOS and firmware selected. You can see right here, there's the newest BIOS file. It's version 2506 from November 5th. So you're just gonna click download on that. Once that's downloaded, you're going to need a USB flash drive. This is what you're gonna put that BIOS file onto. So go to your downloads folder, find the zip file, click on extract, and then browse to your USB flash drive, which should be plugged into your computer. I forgot to tell you that, plug it into your computer real quick. Find it in this PC, you can see I have USB drive E, Select that as the folder and extract it. And now we've got my new BIOS. I have my standard wallpaper in there, but I've got my new BIOS and the BIOS renamer file. If you have a different motherboard manufacturer, you may have one or more files that you also need to put in there. Every manufacturer does it differently, but just make sure you put all of the files from that zip onto your USB. Once you have your BIOS file onto your USB, you're going to need to plug that into your motherboard directly, not onto one of the ports on your case, into the motherboard itself. Your motherboard may look something like mine, where it has a specific USB port labeled as BIOS, even has a little screen printing around it to designate which one. That's the one you should put your USB drive into. If you don't see that on your motherboard, you can put it into any of them. So go ahead and do that next. Now all we need to do is actually go ahead and update our BIOS. So make sure you turn off your computer, shut it down completely. And then when you power it back on immediately, sit here and press the delete key over and over again until you enter your BIOS. And there you are, you're into your BIOS. You can see here, I'm in mine. Now, depending on what motherboard manufacturer you have, this will look a little bit different. But here's the tool you need to look for for each motherboard manufacturer. For MSI, they call their tool mFlash. You can find this while in easy mode, just click on mFlash and your PC will restart and boot into mFlash. For Gigabyte, it's called QFlash Plus. That can also be found on the home screen. For ASRock, you'll likely have to navigate to the Tool tab. Sometimes it's on the home page, but the tool itself is called Instant Flash. For ASUS, I'm gonna show you right here. If you default into easy mode, you're just gonna click on F7 and that's gonna take you to advanced mode. Then I'm gonna click on Tool at the top right. And then I'm gonna select Easy Flash Utility. From there, you're going to need to navigate to the USB drive that you put your BIOS onto. I know that that flash drive I have is a 248 megabyte. I know it's crazy that they even make flash drives that small still but I got it for free, so I can't really complain. But you navigate, you're gonna select that storage device, and then you'll see here, I have the raw crosshair.cap BIOS file. The naming will be different depending on the motherboard manufacturer you have. It should be pretty obvious which file the PC wants you to select. Now, I'm just gonna click on that. So I just clicked yes through all of those options. My PC is now rebooting and it'll boot back into flash mode. The key thing when you're in flash mode is to ensure that you do not lose power or accidentally turn off the power to your device. The key thing to remember while flashing your BIOS is to make sure you do not power it off for any reason. If you're concerned about power surges or if you have a kid running around in your room, make sure that you only do this when you are sure that there is no way that the power can get turned off 
while the BIOS is being flashed. In most motherboards, if the power goes out while you're flashing your BIOS, you can corrupt that BIOS chip and basically brick the motherboard and have to send it in. It is possible for them to repair it most of the time, but that's a huge hassle and it's gonna cost you money. Plus you're gonna to have to pull your motherboard out of your PC, completely disassemble anything that's on it and send it into the manufacturer. Once your BIOS is finished updating, it's restarted itself. You might have to click F1 because your computer thinks it has a new hardware. You'll get back to your UEFI BIOS screen just like this and your BIOS is up to date. You can go back to that tool and see if you are operating under the new BIOS by checking the BIOS version uh, on ASUS. It shows it here on the top. Other manufacturers might show it along the bottom. The last thing you want to do is set your RAM to make sure it's running on XMP, DOCP, or Expo, depending on what you have. Then you want to make sure you set your fan profiles if you want to run those at a higher speed. For ASUS, that's done right here with DOCP. I'm just going to click on enabled and that's going to set the RAM to its rated speed and latency. You can also go into your fan controls and set all that up if you'd like. I'm going to leave mine as stock. And all you need to do after that is click on F10 and hit OK, and that's going to save all your settings and it'll boot you right back into Windows. If you're doing this on a brand new PC and you haven't installed an OS yet, now's the time to start installing your operating system, whether it be Windows, Linux, or whatever. And that's really all there is to it. It's a very easy process. It's even easier if you have MSI. You can actually do that directly within the MSI Center tool. Well, you can show that in another video. Obviously my gaming PC doesn't have an MSI, so it's kind of hard to show that with this one, but we can make sure we include that in a later video. Hope that helps, we'll see you on the next one.